The Euphrates has been the cradle of civilization in West Asia. The river has been the lifeline for millions in Iraq and Syria. Iraq is struggling to cope with drought. According to officials, some 1,200 people have been forced out of southern marshes and farmlands over the past six months. Hayam Eshed is making the extraordinary claim that the United States and Israel have been in contact with a group of aliens. Temple Mount, also known as Al-Aqsa Mosque, is considered to be one of the holiest places on earth. It is believed that the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven from within the Dome of the Rock, making it one of the holiest locations for followers of Christianity, Judaism and Islam. In addition, this is the location where Abraham was going to offer up his son Isaac as a sacrifice to God. It is also where Solomon is claimed to have built the first temple and it is where Jesus threw out the moneylenders of the second temple centuries after it was destroyed. Is it possible that we are witnessing a miracle in our modern era? There are several accounts of people seeing lights in the sky while having an extremely spiritual experience. Aside from that, what is going on with the Euphrates River? Jerusalem and the Euphrates have both been in the spotlight recently. In today's video, we'll go over both of them in detail and attempt to answer all the mysteries surrounding them. Many religious traditions hold Jerusalem in high regard particularly the Abrahamic religions of Judaism, Christianity and Islam, which see it as a holy city. Jerusalem contains some of the most significant places for each of these religions, including the Temple Mount, which is shared by all three. According to the New Testament, Jesus was taken to Jerusalem as a child and visitors to the ancient city have reported feeling a connection ever since. However, one thing the holy city is not known for is unidentified flying objects. It may seem strange to connect the two, yet every year visitors and inhabitants of Jerusalem report seeing strange flying objects. Ezekiel, the biblical prophet, is claimed to have seen fiery wheels in the sky. He considered them to be divine. Now a video is becoming viral on the internet showing another celestial object over Israel that may or may not be of this world. A Jerusalem resident is out for a walk in 2011 when he observes a bright light hovering over the old city. He starts filming and his camera captures something unusual on tape. A dazzling orb of light fills the sky over the old city. It's unusual enough on its own, but then it lowers to a position just above the buildings, pauses for a second and then shoots straight up in what appears to be the blink of an eye. The orb of light appears to hover just above the roof. The sudden emergence of a dazzling flash surprises the witnesses. It soars up into the air and disappears in a fraction of a second. This isn't happening just any place. The orb, or whatever it is, is perched on top of the Dome of the Rock. There are several reports of people seeing lights in the sky while having an extremely spiritual experience. They claim that because we are at a sacred site, something holy is taking place. However, after a shocking revelation by an Israeli space expert, the idea of a UFO connection to the Holy Land was reignited. This remark caused eyes to gaze to the heavens. Hayam Eshed, the former chief of Israel's space security, has publicly said that they have evidence that extraterrestrial people are visiting Earth. According to Hayam Eshed, as part of the deal, we are allowing aliens to do research on Earth and have built a common underground base on Mars. There is an agreement between the US government and the aliens. They signed a contract with us to do experiments here, he said. Eshed went on to say that former US President Donald Trump was aware of the presence of extraterrestrials and was on the verge of revealing information but was urged not to in order to avoid mass hysteria. According to a NASA official, one of the agency's main aims is to seek for extraterrestrial life, although it has yet to find any. Although we have yet to find signs of extraterrestrial life, NASA is exploring the solar system and beyond to help us answer fundamental questions, including whether we are alone in the universe," said a NASA spokesperson in a statement. Eshed, who oversaw the launch of multiple Israeli satellites into space, said he was only coming out now because attitudes were shifting and people appeared more open to it. If I had come up with what I'm saying today five years ago, I would have been hospitalized, he told reporters. Today, they're already talking differently. I have nothing to lose. I've received my degrees and awards. I am respected in universities abroad. Eshed's remarks generated a flood of internet comments and suspicion. At least a half a dozen Twitter accounts purporting to be representatives of the Galactic Federation on Earth have been set up. Other people have asked for preferential treatment and meetings with the extraterrestrials. 
Eshed's statements were welcomed as extraordinary by Nick Pope, who used to examine UFOs for the British Ministry of Defence. Either this is a practical joke or a publicity stunt to help sell his book, perhaps with something lost in translation or someone in the know is breaking ranks, he stated. The UFO and conspiracy theory communities were delighted, according to Pope, but questions remained, such as whether Eshed was speaking from direct personal knowledge and experience or if he was merely repeating what he had been told. The Mystery Surrounding the Euphrates River The Euphrates is one of the world's most historic rivers, having played a role in many significant chapters of human history. However, the river's rapid drying has surprised scientists. More serious than the decreasing water volumes are prophecies related with the Euphrates drying up in the world's major religions. Is the river drying up a sign that the world is coming to an end? Although it may be difficult to believe given the current state of the river, this stretch of the river was once a model of water management in Babylon. While marching through Babylon, Cyrus the Great's army came to the canals built between the Tigris and Euphrates to circulate the latter's waters, which would otherwise overwhelm the entire nearby land when the snows melted on the Armenian mountains. Great canals the size of rivers stretched along to the Tigris and Euphrates, while dozens more traversed the valley connecting the two waterways. There wasn't a single part of the country that wasn't well watered. The canals were also used for crop transportation. The river was also used by religious fighters to promote Islam throughout the Middle East. The Prophet Muhammad's son-in-law, Ali ibn Abi Talib, shifted the capital of his caliphate from Medina to Kufa on the Euphrates south of Babylon in AD 656. However, experts' forecasts for the river are bleak. According to research by the country's water ministry, the Euphrates and Tigris rivers in Iraq will run dry within two decades if no action is taken. Unfortunately, these two rivers constitute up to 98% of Iraq's surface water supply. Indeed, Iraq may become a land without rivers as early as 2040. But what exactly is the Euphrates River's problem that is causing it to dry up? It is a complicated situation, but climate change, conflict and indiscriminate dam construction in neighbouring nations have all led to a water crisis that threatens the livelihoods of millions of people in the region. According to Berkeley Earth, a non-profit climate scientific group based in California, Iraq's annual temperatures are rising at roughly twice the rate of the rest of the globe. The world has warmed by an average of 1.3 degrees Celsius since the late 1800s, while Iraq has warmed by a stunning 2.5 degrees Celsius. The human-made element of the Euphrates issues, on the other hand, begins more than 1,000 kilometers upstream near the river's catchment area in eastern Turkey below the Taurus Mountains. For years, the Turkish government has been building dams to generate power and develop agricultural land. The Kaban Dam on the Upper Euphrates was built in 1974, while the Ataturk Dam was finished in 1990. A $32 billion initiative to build 22 dams and 19 hydroelectric plants on the Tigris and Euphrates rivers will eventually supply roughly one quarter of Turkey's electricity. Meanwhile, Syria built the Tabqa Dam upstream from Raqqa in the 1970s and built a few other dams on the Euphrates and its tributaries before the civil war halted construction. Water flow into Iraq has been cut by about two-thirds since the Turkish and Syrian dams were erected in the 1970s. Water flow into Iraq has been cut by about two-thirds since the Turkish and Syrian dams were erected in the 1970s. Iraqis clashed with both neighbours for decades over its fair portion of the water. When Turkey and Syria channeled the Euphrates River into a series of reservoirs, practically drying out the rivers downstream in Iraq, the conflict came dangerously close to bursting into war. In response, the Iraqi government constructed a canal network connecting the Euphrates River to Lake Al Thathar, northwest of Baghdad. The Euphrates River, according to the Iraqi ministry, will only be filled to one third of its original capacity by 2035. When combined with the loss of Tigris water, Iraq will be short of 80% of the 53 million cubic litres it consumes each year. Meanwhile, not just environmental specialists are concerned about the Euphrates River's drying up. This river has unique significance in two of the world's most prominent religions, Islam and Christianity, and its followers are paying close attention to the prophecies associated with it. Many Muslims are reminded of the several hadiths that mentioned the drying up of the river Euphrates, including, Soon the river Euphrates will disclose the treasure, the mountain of gold, 
so who will be present to that time should not take anything from him. Sayyid Bukhari. The Prophet Muhammad said, The hour will not come to pass before the river Euphrates dries up to unveil the mountain of gold for which people will fight. Ninety-nine of every hundred will die in the fighting, and every man among them will say, Maybe I'm the only one to remain alive. Sayyid Bukhari and Sayyid Muslim. Many of the Prophet Muhammad's prophecies, particularly those concerning signs of the Judgment Day, have come true, according to Islamic scholars. However, the prophecy about the Euphrates River drying up and gold mining has yet to come to pass. This is a critical prophecy since the arrival of the Mahdi is intimately tied to the impending war. This is not improbable, as the discovery of significant gold reserves in the dried up riverbeds might spark renewed civil strife amongst the area's many tribes, as well as other forces interfering in the region's affairs. As a result, many Muslims are keeping a close eye on the fate of the Euphrates, but they have a strict warning from the Prophet not to seek the gold. However, there have been different interpretations of these Euphrates River prophecies. Academics believe they may refer to a period when the water of the Euphrates will be extremely valuable, similar to gold. The revenues expected from the Euphrates dams might be signified by the word gold. Furthermore, after the Euphrates water is drained, substantial gold and petroleum deposits may be uncovered underground. Furthermore, such a valuable metal can be discovered following land subsidence. The Christians anticipate no less chaos from the events surrounding the Euphrates River. Since Jesus Christ indicated that only God knows the hour or day of his second coming, his disciples have predicted when it will happen. The Euphrates River appears to be the final piece of the jigsaw puzzle. Many people believe that major passages in the prophetic book of Revelation demonstrate the Euphrates' importance in end-of-the-world scenarios. Let's hear your thoughts now in the comments down below.